Over time, the denizens of our planet have helped to make sure that those who are gone are not truly lost, and certain treasures are not lost either. Join us as we reveal some of the most priceless ancient artifacts ever found. The Pharaoh Sculpture Egypt is a land of much mystery and many wonders that baffle people to this day. Really, how did they make those pyramids? And while there is another Egyptian treasure on our list, we thought that it would be poetic to start off with a mysterious one, mainly the sculpture of an Egyptian pharaoh. But why does this one make the cut? Well, because historians can't really determine which pharaoh it actually is. They can, however, tell that it was one who ruled in the southern part of Egypt, and some believe that it even may be sculpted in the 5th or 6th dynasty of the land. But no one's really for sure. Regardless of these facts, the sculpture is expertly crafted. What do you get when you add a mystery, mix in some history, and some pure art? Well, you end up with this priceless artifact. And the best part? This piece is also at the Smithsonian, which proves exactly how valuable it is. The Rosetta Stone Sticking with Egypt, we go from the head of a pharaoh to a piece of a rock that's arguably changed how we looked at their culture. You see, the Rosetta Stone is famous because it allowed non-Egyptian people to read the hieroglyphs that were within the pyramids and temples in the land. This stone had three different languages written on it, and the top part was Egyptian, while the middle part had Demotic text, and the bottom, much to the surprise of the people at the time, featured Greek and symbols. When it was found in 1799, it astounded the French soldier who discovered it. After changing hands due to a war between Britain and France, the stone would then be used to help translate the hieroglyphs of the pyramids and beyond, and gave a much deeper understanding of what they said. Through those translations, a study of Egyptian culture grew in leaps and bounds, and it was all thanks to the mysterious stone. In fact, the stone by itself became a part of culture of the world itself. Ironically though, not only is the stone priceless, but it's also very controversial. The Egyptians actually want it back, and the French are not exactly happy that it was taken from them during the war that had it land in British hands. Yet the British do refuse to return the stone, whether because of its history, its value, or perhaps just a stiff upper lip it looks like it's going to stay in the British Museum for the time being. The Koh-i-Noor Diamond Diamonds are forever, right? Well, they're also really, really valuable, and for good reason. What's more, the bigger the diamond, the more the value. Yet, it can get even more valuable when it's part of a historic item, say, a British Queen's crown. This is the case with the Koh-i-Noor Diamond. But while it is truly priceless, it also comes with a history that's questionable in its morality. That's because the birthplace of the Koh-i-Noor diamond is India. But how exactly did it end up on the crown of a queen? Well, basically, as the story goes, the East India Trading Company, which is now owned by the UK, seized the diamond back in their colonial days. It would then be appropriated to be presented to none other than Queen Victoria herself. Adding to its value, the diamond is 105 carats, which is massive for a diamond. And it's been placed prominently on top of the crown for everyone to see. Though the crown itself is not actually worn anymore, it is on display at the Tower of London, which is part of the problem in the minds of India. That's because they want the jewel back, but the British, again, simply refuse. Egyptian Paint now, we know that paint doesn't sound priceless, so why is it on our list? Well, as in many things, you simply don't judge a book by its cover. The palette is actually thousands of years old, and yet the paint that's within it is still visible. How is that even possible? Shouldn't it have dried up by now, or maybe dissolved or evaporated? Well, that's the mystery. And now here's the history. Inscribed on the palette itself is the name of Pharaoh Amenhotep III who ruled from 1390 to 1350 BC, so potentially this could have been his personal painting palette. Imagine what this palette could have been used for, the art that might have been decorating the walls of the pyramids or even the palaces? 
This is what makes the most simple of things like paint so extremely priceless. It's something simple yet has a meaning that transcends its worth. Historians look at it and imagine what the pharaoh must have done, wondering about his creations and wondering if they're still out there in the world. The Imperial Regalia of the Holy Roman Empire This set of items were to be worn and used by the emperor himself, including at one time Charlemagne. There are many items that are said to be part of the Imperial Regalia, including a crown, a scepter, and a sword, along with an orb, a holy lance, and a cross. However, there is some debate as to which is actually a part of the regalia and which isn't. Still though, the set is incredibly impressive. Not to mention the fact that it's gold in a lot of places. There's also a lot of history in regards to these pieces traveling around the world during the Middle Ages. Needless to say, however, while they have been around, they're now located in the Imperial Treasury of Vienna, Austria, where they can be kept safe and together for the time being. Priam's Treasure Another collection of items, Priam's Treasure, holds a high honor because its history is both an item and a connection to World War II. Archaeologist Heinrich Schleiman discovered the treasure in what is now Turkey and slowly began to smuggle the pieces to Germany in order to show to his leader. In his mind, he felt that he had found clues that would lead to the legendary city of Troy which, if true, would be a find that would go far beyond priceless. Unfortunately though, his work would be stolen a century later during World War II. That's when they either burned or stole numerous German and European artifacts within Germany's possession. In this case, they stole the entire hoard of golden items and then took them back to the motherland. Then, in 1996, the Pushkin Museum decided that it would be a good idea to display the treasures. While that in itself is not necessarily wrong, it did lead to the Germans finding out and wanting their treasure back. Not surprisingly though, Russia has said no every single time. The Ashikaga Shogun Armor Japan is a land that prides itself on its history and with good reason. Long before they were a technological powerhouse, they were a land of samurai emperors. And to this day, the samurai are still revered all over the world as some of the greatest warriors who ever existed. As for the emperors, their names are also etched in history, and as such, anything that's associated with them is considered to be priceless. A great example of this is a set of armor that's believed to have been given to a shrine by its founder of the Ashikaga Shogun Dynasty. The armor in question is one that's meant to be worn on horseback, and as you can see, the armor is in pretty pristine condition. Now, as for why the armor was donated to a shrine, nobody really knows for certain, nor do they know why the first shogun of the Ashikaga family decided to donate his potentially still usable armor. It all serves as a unique and remarkable piece of Japanese history. An ostrich egg map. Now, <laughs> I'm not joking you. Someone literally took an ostrich egg and decided to carve a map of the world on it, or at least the world that they knew existed. The egg would be discovered in Florence, Italy, which has made many wonder who created it and why they went to such great lengths to craft it. Personally, I just want to know where they got an ostrich egg to begin with. The questions around the egg are numerous. Why a map? Why an egg as to have it be a place to put it on? And why was it lost? These questions remain unanswered, but it does make it one priceless artifact that will have people scratching their heads for quite some time. Those that were lost and destroyed. Now there's always a dark side when it comes to trying to find artifacts, mainly because some people don't really care about them or attempts to preserve history are met with skepticism, and thus are considered to be low priority, or in worst cases, outright destroyed. In China, there was a group of men who were contracted to help make a metro line, which there's nothing wrong with that. The problem though was that the path for the metro came right through some ancient tombs. Tombs that were being excavated by archaeologists. In fact, those archaeologists found five different tombs, many of which not only had treasures, 
but also the fossilized remains of animals and possibly people. Digging teams set up sites around the tombs, and then one day when they returned, everything was bulldozed by the contractors who were making the metro line. It could be a misunderstanding, but the company does have a history of destroying such tombs, with many incidents occurring in the same year. But wait, there's more! Acts of protest, along with revolutions, have led to the destruction of numerous artifacts in order to make a statement, and there have been plenty of cases of artifacts being destroyed for no reason at all. Other times, it's the advancement of humanity that causes great destruction. A legendary Mayan pyramid, one that used to be a major religious monument to its people, was once torn down to make a road. A road! For real! That is the true tragedy of the matter. There's no doubt that many more priceless artifacts are out there in the world today. But it just leaves you to have to wonder if people will find them and actually appreciate them, or decide to get rid of them in one form or another. Antikythera Mechanism this mysterious artifact almost looks like something from the future, but it's actually at least 2,000 years old. This machine of sorts was found in the remains of a sunken Greek cargo ship. It's made of bronze and contains an intricate system of 30 hand-cut gears. The face of the device also has characters etched into it. Now at first, archaeologists thought that it might be a navigation